Good morning, thank you. And thank you for joining us in Inside the Deloitte Studio. This is the first time we've done this and thank you to those of you joining in the classroom. Um, we're very excited because the opportunity here is for you to get a little bit of an inside view into what it's like to work here at Deloitte. So without further ado, I am gonna welcome our two guests here this morning. We have Keisha Nesby from Advisory and Kyle Yurick from Audit. <laughs> All right, well again, thank you both for joining us. Um, we are gonna get started. So we're gonna start with just learning a little bit about what you do mm -hmm. and what has been your kind of your biggest adventure here at Deloitte. So Keisha, let's start with you. Tell me a little bit about a particular client assignment or, or work that you've done that's most memorable to you. So day to day, I really help our clients manage their IT risk. And so one of my memorable experiences was really helping a client roll out a new IT product and it ended up taking me to Bangalore, India. I don't know if anyone's traveled to India out there, but it was a really, really magnificent experience just being able to meet my counterparts overseas and understanding that while we're separated by location, you know, the Deloitte blood, the Deloitte culture really um, transcends country, it, send, it transcends culture. So that was a really, really neat experience. Yeah, that's wonderful. So Kyle, how about you? Sure. Well. Uh Deloitte actually has a relationship with the NFL. I don't know if any of you have heard of the NFL. <laughs> but uh, when the NFL elects its Hall of Fame at the Super Bowl each year, so what they do is they bring in sports writers and a team from the Deloitte office in that city gets to certify the Hall of Fame ballots. And when the, Hall, the Super Bowl was in Detroit, I was able to, to participate in that. So I got to count ballots and elect Troy Aikman to the Hall of Fame. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I think we'd all enjoy that. Um, so let's kind of shift a little bit. You both have, have I know, done global work. Mm -hmm. um, but Kyle, tell us a little bit about your experience, because I think you also had the opportunity to do it as an intern, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I did two internships with Deloitte, and uh, the first one was in Detroit locally. But for my second internship, I actually went to Paris for nine weeks. Uh, and I spent some time working on ADP and, and a French bank, but just really got to explore the city and, and learn about the culture. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, that's great. Well, and the same thing for you, Keisha, when you were talking about being in India and elsewhere. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you got a chance to do outside of work. So we were there for three days. So we long flight, we were only there for three days. And so um, one of those days, we actually took a shopping spree trip. Mm -hmm. So we were able to kind of go out and shop. And our, again, our counterparts from um, our Bangalore office were able to show us around the city, show us all the monuments. And then from there on the way back, we kind of took a personal trip and went to Dusseldorf, Germany. We also went to London and we went to Scotland. So it was a great way to kind of do the client service work, but also to tie in some, some personal fun. Yeah, I think, I'm sure you both can express that work and fun and fulfillment kind of is all interconnected. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk about your intern ex experiences, because I think many people here are curious about what's next for them. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about your intern experience, right. Keisha. Well, when I first interned, to be honest, I really didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, they said advisory, but in ERS, I really didn't know what that meant. And so, you know, by being in the internship, I really understood we're like, it's like firefighters and being a fire marshal. Firefighters, they put out fires. Mm -hmm. Deloitte's like a fire marshal. We help our clients manage the risk put precautionary controls in place to really present, prevent a disaster from happening. So I really got to understand what I would be doing for my entire career. And we had a similar conference like this. It was actually in Orlando. Um, great content. We went to Epcot, had um, a, a fun event afterwards. So I um, had a great internship experience, and it really got me prepared for what life would be like 
once I join the firm full time. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate you sharing that analogy because I think it's so hard for sometimes, you know, students and others to really understand mm -hmm. what we do, but hopefully you'll get more and more of those chances to share. So tell us a little bit about yours, Kyle, your internship. Sure. I know you told us you started obviously doing some things abroad, but tell us a little more. Absolutely, yeah. So I, I did uh, an internship in audit my first summer, and obviously learned a lot about auditing and learned what it was like to, to work for Deloitte and the, the Deloitte culture. But one of the things that really stood out to me was just the connections that I made with my fellow interns and the other Deloitte professionals. It's, it's kind of funny. I think Brad is here in the audience. I see him. He's being shy. But <laughs> someone that I interned with 11 years ago, still here with the firm, senior manager in Detroit. We still work together. And it's, it's just great that we still have that connection. And it, it shows how deep some of those Deloitte roots go. Yeah, that's kind of fun. I think just as people mentioned meeting people, um, chance to start those friendships as well as colleagues for life. So again, you've talked about some pretty cool experiences, and you've met some interesting people along the way. Um, Keisha, share with us. I know we heard about some NFL players, but I know there's all kinds of interesting people in business. Tell us who you find has been the most interesting person or memorable that you've met along um, your journey. I would have to say Barbara Adachi. I don't know if a lot of you know her, um, but she's one of our, our women's initiative leaders. And she is, I'm petite. She is this pint-sized woman who packs a lot of power, and so um, she really connects with me and uh, someone I can kind of admire um, from afar. That's great. Yeah, we all need those leaders to admire, yeah. don't we? Mm -hmm. Kyle, how about you, besides Troy Aikman? Sure. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'll mention two. I met, I met Sergio Marchionne, who is the CEO of Fiat and Chrysler. And for those of you who follow the auto industry at all, the guy's an absolute rock star. I mean, he walks down the hallways at Chrysler with entourages, and he's done turnarounds of two automotive manufacturers. It's the, the guy just touches everything and turns to gold. Uh, but I also met Steve Eiserman once while we were auditing the Detroit Red Wings, and he's this massive hockey star and very well known in Detroit. There's actually a street named after him outside the arena. And I'll never forget this. He, he introduced himself to me, or he met me at the Red Wings office, and he, he said, hi, I'm Steve. And I said, well, no kidding, you're Steve. There's a street sign with your name on it outside. I know exactly yeah. who you are. But anyway, that was a, good, that was a good, uh, good experience for sure. So note to all of you, if you want to work in Detroit Audit, there's yes. some serious opportunities to meet sports right. figures, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. the most popular manager in Detroit because yeah, I audit the way. Tigers and the Red Wings. That's it has nothing awesome. to do with me. It's purely awesome. those jobs. <laughs> well, that's a good tie into maybe where we want to go from here. So um, I think many people, I hear questions around managing work and your life and stress and what do you do to do all that? So Keisha, what do you do? The day ends. How do you keep balance and have fun? Yeah, so to kind of decompress at the end of the day, I definitely try to, to, to take part in things that I enjoy. So kickboxing, um, I'm actually getting engaged. I'm engaged, I'm getting married in October. And so learning how to cook and take cooking awesome. classes just to, you know, not let them starve. Um, so. <laughs> So that's been a good, you know, when people talk about work-life balance, I mean, there are certain days when we really have to put in long hours, but you're rewarded for it. And so, you know, you're incentivized to do good work. You know, I've received applause awards. Um, and then the firm really appreciates you taking that time for yourself to do the things that you enjoy and they support it, so. Yeah, I think a twist on that. We talk about it's life, right? Mm -hmm. Work's just a part of it. Exactly. And the term work-life is a little misconstrued, it isn't is. it? Kyle, how about you? Sure. Well, in case it hasn't been painfully obvious, I, I love sports, and I'm a, I'm a Detroit Tigers season ticket holder, actually, so in a lot of my free time, I end up at the ballpark with my wife and daughter watching baseball games, and I'm, I'm trying to get to all 30 stadiums. I've been to 15 so far. I've got two more, St. Louis and Kansas City, if anybody has been there. I'm going to those in two weeks, so if you catch me, let me know how, what to expect. Yeah, that's fun. So just... You know, you obviously have both been here for a little bit. You know, when you think of Deloitte, these folks are hearing all kinds of messages about why Deloitte, but kind of from the heart. You know, why are you here, Keisha? Yeah, so when I first was trying to decide where I was gonna go um, in undergrad, I really thought Deloitte was more progressive than a lot of the firms in, in terms of diversity. So it wasn't just a message that you're hearing, but when I walked into the, to the office, I could see it. I saw accomplished people at different levels who were moving up into the firm, and so there was a path for me to follow behind, and I could you know, go as far as I wanted to, and so that really attracted me to Deloitte, in addition to the people. I mean, you, you have to find people you connect with, people who um, you wanna work late nights with, you know, because there will be those times. So finding a group of people where you really fit and you can connect, those are the things that really drew me into Deloitte. That's great. It sounds like 
the authentic nature because mm -hmm. they're getting so many messages and they right. have to distinguish what's real and what's not. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Kyle, how about you? Yeah. No. It, it certainly was the people when I was when I was in your shoes. It, all the firms do great work and we do similar things. But the the folks I met at Deloitte, the the staff and seniors who I was going out to lunch with, I felt like they could be my colleagues and the the managers and partners I met. I could look at them as mentors and people I wanted to pattern my career after. And so for me, it, it was a no brainer when it came to that decision. That's great. So what was your biggest maybe mistake or something that you learned from earlier in your career? Because I'm sure they're all thinking about what do I have to do and, and you know, whether it's here or elsewhere. Tell us a little bit about maybe the, the biggest challenge or something that you learned from that biggest challenge. Okay. So for me, it's learning how to gently deliver a hard message. And so as an auditor, you know, people are already like, oh gosh, the auditor's here. <laughs> so trying to really um, deliver a message in a consultative way. So not just saying, you know, your, your system's horrible, you know, how, where'd you hire these people from, but really kind of trying to um, coach them, sharing insights you've gained from other clients, ways to improve. So being more consultative instead of just a person who's a bad cop. Um, I've, I've been that bad cop and didn't deliver my message correctly, and you kind of create a very combative relationship. So I learned that it's really about how you deliver the message. So it sounds like you learned a lot about human interaction, mm -hmm. right? There's so much of what we do is right. how we connect with people and build those relationships. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kyle? Sure, I think I've learned or, or been challenged by some of the team aspects that go into auditing. I mean, you can't do a complete audit on your own. You've got to rely on your, your staff and the other managers and the partners who are all working with you. And so I know that you know, Keisha's doing exactly her role and what she's supposed to, and I'm gonna do what I'm assigned to do and what I'm working on, and when we bring it all together, it's this great product. And it's, you learn a lot about trusting your, your colleagues that you work with. Um, and that kind of leads me to another question around um, how you learn and grow. You've been here over a period of time. You know, all these folks are very much focused on their education and their development. So how do you continue to stay fresh? How do you continue to make sure you're learning and growing? We know we have, obviously, this great facility, but it's more than that. How about you, Kyle? Yeah, sure. Um, one thing that really motivates me or has kept me fresh, I mean, I've been doing this for 11 years, and it's it can get a little bit routine, but each year we bring in new staff and new new employees to the firm. And I really enjoy the teaching aspect that goes on. So while I may have done something four or five times, it's new to that person. And so I'm up at the whiteboard showing them the debits and credits and walking them through how to, how to look at a, the company or a specific, specific transaction. And that helps to keep me fresh and motivated for what we're doing. Great. Excellent. How about you, Kate? And for me, it's really taking on those stretch experiences. So midway through my career, um, I focused on healthcare my entire career. And we had a big win in the Atlanta office, and it required me to completely switch my industry focus. So going from healthcare to financial services. And some people may have shied away from that. You know, it's too much of a change. You know, this is a good thing. Let's keep it going. But I really had to kind of rebrand myself. And being in Atlanta, it's not a huge financial services market. So building a network with people in New York and people in Charlotte to really expand. So kind of retooling myself has kept me fresh and being flexible and agile um, and taking on new experiences. You know, that made me think of something, Keisha, because you talked about change. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us that have been here for a while, and I'm sure that, you know the students in the audience mm -hmm. have heard a great deal about change. And as they think of the changes they're going through and what to prepare for, I think we would all say there were so many unexpected changes. How do you, Kyle, deal with change? I think it's it's something that you have to be open to and almost expect. You, you, you just expect that something is going to change, something's going to happen, there's going to be a curveball that gets thrown into a project, and you have to be ready to adapt for it. So you can plan and you can try to think about everything that you know, but when that curveball comes, you just have to rely back on the understanding you have of your client and the knowledge that you've gained over your career to then execute and, and continue on the project. Very good. How about you, Keisha? Yeah, and I would say just remaining flexible. So every day I walk in with my to-do list, but I promise you mm -hmm. something always comes up that changes my plan. So not being so stuck on your plan, but being kind of agile and being able to move and, and find out a new way to kind of accomplish the goal. Great. Thank you. So now we're going to have a little fun. We're going to kind of shift gears a little bit, and we're going to get into some rapid-fire questions that are both related to your work and not. Um, so we're going to start with, Keisha, I'll start with you. We will start with work. Okay. One word to describe Deloitte. 
collaborative opportunity. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to shift. If you could meet anyone, alive or dead, who would it be? Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> well, this is close, right? It is. We're, it we're, is. We got it. <laughs> How about you, Kyle? I try. <laughs> That's good. I think I would want to meet Bill Clinton. I won't follow up with the why question. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, that's a good one as well. Um, if you could have an occupation other than your own, what would it be, Keisha? Um, cosmetic product designer. Interesting. Mm -hmm. See, I wouldn't expect that. Yeah. We learn things. How about you, Kyle? Professor, no doubt. Oh, how fun. Professor. Excellent. Okay. Other than second baseman for the Tiger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, what is the quality you most admire in other people? I'll start with Kyle this time, and other people, excuse me. Uh, I like ambition. Mm -hmm. I like passion. Passion will draw you in. Someone who really loves what they do, it'll just draw you in. That's right. And now, turning it back on you, what is it you would say you most admire about yourself? Hmm. I'm a connector and resourceful. So I'm always trying to, for, from a client perspective, connect my clients to the solution. And even from like a more social friendly, always trying to connect someone's idea with either a resource or another person. So I'm a connector. Very good. And Kyle, how about you? What do you admire most in yourself? I'm, I'm a problem solver. I, I enjoy embracing those challenges. People present me both personally and professionally with, a, with difficult situations and I like trying to figure them out and, and get to an answer. Well, in listening to both of you, I think um, we definitely can see that it's the diverse nature of different traits that really make us successful. And obviously, these things both lended themselves to making you successful. So before we go to the, the Q&A, um, if you were to give our future interns here a word of advice, what would you share? What would you say, Keisha? I would just say absorb all that you can, network, meet people, and never feel like you're too young to influence. Um, the one thing I can appreciate, appreciate about advisory is that day one, I felt like I could make a contribution. I may not have known all the answers, understood all the IT and the complexities, mm -hmm. but I always felt like as long as I had something to say or a point of view, um, my peers, the partners, the managers were always willing to, to listen. And if I had a good idea, actually able to implement it. So you're never too young to influence. I like that. Uh, I. I would say to don't be afraid, and this is going to sound silly, but don't be afraid to think. A lot of times when people get into this profession, you know, there's a program and I've got six steps that I'm going to follow and I'm going to do them. But think about what's steps seven, eight, and nine, or think about why you're doing steps one through six and how that fits into whatever project you're working on. And if you can do that and you can demonstrate that, you're going to have great success. I like it. That's great. Well, thank you both very much. Well, we want to make sure we engage the audience. I'm sure many of the things shared caused both of you to have some questions. So we want to just take a minute um, to uh, turn on the lights, I believe, and we're going to open up for some Q&A. All right, mic runners. All right, I see some gentlemen over there in the front, right there. Uh, hi, I'm Dave Sang from University of Delaware. Um, could you talk a little bit about how your groups work together and what extent? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I'm on the audit side, and we we focus primarily on the the say the numbers that go into the financial statements. And then, please fill right. in the gaps here for me. But essentially, we work together, and we do testing on uh, Keisha's group does testing on systems, right. uh, a lot of IT controls and things like that to make sure that the IT systems produce accurate information. Right, and so that the IT environment is reliable. So, you know, with everything becoming more and more digitized um, and computerized. Um, the financial statement audit team really relies on the computer systems to have the appropriate controls and so making sure that I can't pay myself, making sure that I, I'm unable to compromise the system. We actually go in and make sure that the appropriate controls are in place to kind of prevent things from happening, bad things from happening. Great, thank you. Um, how about uh, the, go, that works. The gentleman right there and then we'll grab the woman in front. Hello, I'm Eric from uh, USC, and congratulations on your engagement. And uh, I wanted to ask, <laughs> you said that as an intern, you got a good idea of what life as you know li life at Deloitte would be like. What was the biggest surprise, because uh, you talked about a lot of change, that you thought you knew what it would be like, but oh wow, this is a surprise to me that I didn't see this one coming. Yeah, I would say 
the days were so long. Not, not necessarily that you're working long hours, but I was like, wow, this is what an eight hour day feels like. It just feels very different from, from being in school. Um, and then the other thing I learned is just Deloitte does so much. Um, and it's such a rich organization and so many different opportunities. And you know, I grew up really only knowing about audit. Actually, advisory was pretty new to me back then. So just being able to take the kind of accounting background and IT background and see how it works and see how we can actually serve our clients and help them with issues and manage risk was very insightful to me. I, I was surprised by how fun it was. The, the, one of the first things or kind of slogans that I heard, I remember, was work hard, play hard. And the, the teams all seemed to get, to get along really well and joke around with one another. And that, that was a little surprising. It was a welcome surprise. Great. We'll shift to the other room in a minute, but I believe she was patiently waiting in the row in front of you right here. You can put your, there we go. Hi, I'm Amy Rosenbaum. And um, Kyle, I had a question for you in regards to studying, or not studying abroad, but um, interning abroad yeah. in Paris. How did you get involved with that? And you know, what sparked your interest? And what did you really take away from it? Certainly. So I, I had done my internship in Detroit, and I knew that that was what I wanted to do full time when I was ready to start my career, was auditing in Detroit. And um, so I started to talk to the recruiters about what options there were to fill that second summer, because I, I still had another year before I was going to work. And uh, I talked to Dana Catania, actually, who's one of the facilitators. And, and there, there she <laughs> is back there. Uh, she was able to, to help get me on that path. And we were offering a global internship, kind of like an exchange. And we, we still have a similar program now to this day. Uh, and what it really did for me is it just opened my eyes to the, the really multinational nature of business. And it, it just broadened my perspective greatly. And it piqued my interest in doing those types of things and being involved in them. So I've always worked on multinational clients. Uh, and actually, I'm in September, I'm going to start a, a two-year rotation in London. So I'm, I'm going to continue that international experience uh, starting in September. That's great. So let's shift, make sure we give everybody a chance. How about the gentleman right next to you there, Christina? Hi, my name is Cameron Weathers from Warehouse College in Atlanta. And I have a question uh, for both of you guys. I wanted to know where you guys went to undergrad and how those experiences helped you in your internship and in your full-time job. Hmm. Okay. I went to un the University of Georgia, go dogs. Any bulldogs in the house? Okay. <laughs> um, and so Georgia is a huge uh, recruiting uh, pool for the Atlanta office. And so, you know, Deloitte had a strong presence there. And so we were able to kind of meet professionals before we even went into the office. And so um, being at UGA, being involved in different things outside of academics kind of prepared me for that internship experience. Um, but the recruiters at Georgia were awesome. And it really uh, made an impression and, and kind of encouraged me to go to Deloitte. Yeah, I went to the University of Michigan. And I would say similar thing about being able to meet recruiters and having access to the firm definitely was helpful. Uh, but another thing that was really the, my peers, the, the folks who I was in class with. I, some of my really good friends in college were showing interest in Deloitte. And I kind of said, oh, OK, well, I get along and work well with you. And you're, you're liking this firm also. So that made a little sense to me. Yep. Right. You definitely influence one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, gentleman in the front, Christine. Hi, my name is Tommy, and I'm from San Francisco State. Uh, thank you both for being here. And I know that at Deloitte, there is like a like kind of an outline for a career path, but it's also a little fluid. Can you guys tell me, it, um, give me an example of different points in your career where you kind of took the reins and made a decision about what you wanted to do? OK. I think I kind of mentioned earlier how I went from healthcare to financial services. At that time, healthcare was a little slow. Now it's, pick, you know, it's picked up. It's it's doing amazing things, a lot of different regulatory challenges. Um, and so when there was a decision for me to take on a new industry, I had to make that decision. Um, and so once I accepted, this is something I want to do. It's like, how do I build the network? How do I get the experience in order to bring the value back to my client? Um, and so I traveled to New York. I was there for about a year working on a project, went to, to Charlotte to try to, again, get that experience and then bring it back to the Atlanta, Birmingham, Birmingham, and Jacksonville market. So, but there are a lot of opportunities. That's the great thing about Deloitte. You've seen people go from different functions. Um, you, you've seen people kind of create their own career. And so that's why you should network because it's not only about networking with the people you work with day in and day out, but just to hear the, the different things that people are doing across functions um, is very powerful and meaningful. 
Absolutely, and just having an idea of what you want to do and communicating it. So as I mentioned, I mean, I, 11 years ago, I interned in Paris, and I've never forgotten that I wanted to d have international experience. And so I kept telling my partners, I kept telling my counselors that I was interested, talked to other managers, senior managers, to look for the right opportunity. And once I figured out, okay, I want to join this group in London, and that's what I want to do, then I you know, communicated that and got in touch with them, and that's how I was able to, to really guide my career to that destination. So Kyle, you're touching upon what I think they're gonna hear more about is building your brand, right? Absolutely. You have to distinguish yourselves amongst a very large population. So those were some of the things it sounds like you did. Great, we wanna make sure, we won't exclude some of you from the front, but way in the back, maybe we back it up a little bit. Um, I saw a hand in the middle, second to last row, is it? Maybe go around from the back or pass it down. That works too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Natisha and I'm from Ohio State. And Ooh. I was wondering if you could talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm Ms. Wolverine. I'm right. sorry. I, I can't help Well, I and I didn't tell him earlier. I'm either. a Buckeye too. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> so I was wondering if you guys could talk about your choice of. IT versus audit, and any advice that you guys would have for us who are going to make that choice soon? Okay. So for me, again, when I first started at UGA, I didn't know anything about advisory. Uh, but I knew I had a strong interest in IT. Actually, growing up, I thought I was going to be an engineer. I went to Georgia Tech for a summer program, had to build a mousetrap. It fell apart, so I knew my days in engineering were over. So I was like, how can I salvage kind of the IT um, skill set and the accounting skill set. And so that's when the recruiters told me more about um, these, the advisory practice and what we do. And then within advisory, there are people who are even um, have more of a deep technical back background and do security and privacy. So you can stay high level with your IT or go really, really deep into information technology. And why I liked it is because I saw IT as a, you know, a way for the future um, with so many different changes that were coming out. I wanted to be a part of that. Um, but I use my accounting skill set a lot. So I'm able to, to talk the technical language of IT, but also the technical language of accounting. And so when you bring those two together, you can kind of, um, kind of be the mediator between the two groups. So that's why I chose it. It kind of gave me a little bit of both. For, for me, it was really audit versus tax, and I had a hard time deciding between the two. And th the best way I could analogize it was that I look at auditing now, at least having a little bit more experience. Is, uh, at aud in auditing, I learned you know, maybe this much about the whole company, but it's very broad, and we learn a lot. And the tax folks get really, really deep in, in that tax area. And from, from my personality and what I was looking for, I wanted to, to stay a little bit broader. Uh, that was really how I made the call. Great, thank you both. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, and I, it's hard, I don't mean to exclude anybody, but um, maybe the gentleman right here in the middle with the yellow tie. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Ross Horowitz from Hofstra. And again, touching upon uh, what someone had asked before, I was just curious, you guys said that you started with Deloitte, so was there ever a time when you thought you were gonna leave? And you know, we talked about a lot of people here, and they say maybe one in 10 people will stay and make partner. So was there a time you thought you were going to leave? If so, why did you stay? And at what point in your career did you realize that you were going to stick with Deloitte for the long term? Go first. Sure. So uh, you know, I'm, it, it's interesting because you see a lot of your colleagues and your friends do move on to other opportunities. And you, you always want to put yourself in that position and think, well, would that fit for me? Or would I be interested in that? And of course, you look at other jobs. But I, I think ultimately, the, the talent in this organization and the opportunity to work for partners that are so talent, so smart and able to pass along that knowledge and work with, say, staff and seniors and be able to mentor them and they're so eager to learn and provide those opportunities, that's what keeps me here. Yeah, I would say the same thing. I would say the talented people, you know, I, I do know people who've left the, the, the firm and they're like, wow. The caliber of people changes once you go outside of our four, four walls. So um, also, you know, with so much opportunity, it's like, let me look inside my own house before I decide to go, yeah. you know, do something else. And let me see if there's a way for me to pull in other skills or other interests 
while I'm at Deloitte, especially after you've built a network, you've built a brand, why not capitalize on that brand and kind of stay connected at the company? So um, it's not really been a matter of, of looking outside the firm, but how can I pull in different aspects of what I'm interested in in the firm? Great. Yeah. Well, thank you both very much. I think we probably could talk forever, right? But we have limited time, and we really appreciate you sharing your experiences and a little bit about yourselves. And thanks so much to the audience um, for your participation, and we can't wait to see and talk more this afternoon.